I've been using Apple's main stage for a long time as part of my live performance setup. And uh, in the last few years, I've started uh, connecting Logic and main stage in a way so that Logic is actually doing my uh, patch changes inside of main stage, which just makes it easier when I perform. And so today I'm gonna go do a little breakdown of how I set the two up to talk together and how I set it up to do not just uh, patch changes, but also uh, some of the more nuanced things like being able to change things within a single patch effects or different things that you want to bring up and to be able to use. And so uh, the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to go to my audio MIDI setup and um, I've got a bunch of the stuff here that's for hardware controllers but today I'm just going to focus on on creating this uh, communication between Logic and MainStage. So first thing I need to do is go to the IAC driver and I need to create a pathway, um, the driver so that connects, a virtual driver that connects between Logic to MainStage. Uh, so this is one directional. I just want Logic to speak to main stage and not vice versa. Um, so here I've created one called Logic to main stage. Uh, you can just create by pressing a new one here. It's already there. And I've kept it all to default. And so once I set this up here, um, it's going to create a pathway for me to then inside Logic be able to choose that to do the program changes. Uh, so now here inside Logic, uh, one of the tracks that I have I've gone here and just gone to utility and picked external instrument. Once I've done that, I can go to MIDI destination and I can pick the driver that we just created. So IAC driver, logic to main stage. Keeping it at default channel one, that's all I need to do here. And then we're gonna program this later. On the main stage side, I'm gonna to go to my top folder here and it's gonna show the MIDI route here. So I'm gonna, in this area, it's gonna show program changes. I'm gonna pick that same driver. I'm gonna pick for device, logic to main stage, IAC driver. Also keep this one to channel one. Once I've done this, all these presets that I have uh, for a full performance, um, I can keep them in chronological order or um, you can change them however you want. But here, as you can see, I've got, uh, in this patch, I've got uh, the signature, the tempo, and then the program change that we're gonna use on the logic side. Uh, so for this particular one, I'm just gonna use float, so this is program change two, uh, it's in 6.8 and BPM is 72. Now the BPM is not gonna be synced, um, hopefully at some point when Apple also adds um, Ableton link onto main stage, it'll be easier to be able to keep uh, the tempos together. But for now I have them so that when I have general effects like delays and stuff, that the tempo is still matching. So I'm gonna go back to logic here. So now here, once we click this open and we have our piano roll, and we're gonna go ahead and open this up so that we can see all the automation and everything. First thing I'm gonna do in this main section here, you've got program change. Once I pick program change, it's gonna show so that right here, it's, I know it's at the very bottom corner here, but I've got program change number one. So it's gonna be one degree off from the other one. So where in main stage is gonna be two, this one starts at zero. So program change one is gonna create uh, program two on this one. So I've got this and once uh, I can run this, let me go ahead and put this to another patch so you can see it changing. Once I click the start here, it's gonna change it to the patch that I want. So that's a straightforward way of being able to just do a single program change or multiple program changes. Like if you have within a song, you have more than one preset, you can switch between the two, which is often the case for me. The other thing uh, that's useful, so, here in this particular song, I have an instance of guitar rig, uh, which I only want to turn on uh, during the solo section. Uh, this is all stuff I used to do on, the, on a pedal board, but it's just much easier to program this here. Um, so in order to be able to do this, what I've done, and this is a personal preference, but what I've done is in the initial layout, I've created two buttons here. These are basically two virtual buttons. One is programmed to control 21, one is control, uh, programmed to control 22. And now these, these are arbitrary. It can be whatever you want them to be. I just chose two of them. You can make as many as you want, as few as you want. Uh, but for me, it's nice just to have two to keep tra track of it. So once I've done that, in this template here, as you can see, this one's not assigned to anything for this track, uh, for this preset. But if I go to here, it shows on my, on this, um, right here on my melody patch, what I've got is an instance of Guitar Rig 7. And I've just got simply, I've picked Bypass. So that it basically has the on-off switch. So it turns it on when I need it, and it turns it off when I'm done with the solo. 
in order to do this, now because I've programmed this to uh, in the layout section at control 21, you can see here on this side, I've got the MIDI port selected again, logic to main stage, got it to channel one, keeping it absolute because you want it to turn on, just basically send one piece of information and then send it again. And then here I've just picked up CC21, which is your control 21, and then do not pass through. So now once I've done this, I can go back to logic, and from here in the automation area, I'm gonna go and pick 21. So in this instance, it's already selected. So now as you can see here, I've made it so that in the solo section, once it arrives here, I've maxed it out to 127. It's gonna turn on that instance of a guitar rig, and then once I'm done with the solo, it's going to turn it off. So let me show you here. I'm just going to run this. And then we can see it in main stage on Guitar Rig. It's currently off. I'm going to start Logic. And then it comes on here. Same thing is going to happen once it passes that error and it's gonna turn it off. Um, anyway, this was a, a quick breakdown. Um, Logic is really powerful and you can do all kinds of stuff with it. And uh, for those of you that are into it and that uh, that use it, it's, it's a pretty powerful tool. It can be something as simple as just using it to get keyboard sounds or it can be something uh, as complicated as the way I run it where it's running with this, it's running with some of the controller pads and everything that are programmed into it. But this is one simple way to get it to do program changes and also to be able to do things like I showed you, like just a solo or, or an effect that you want to bring on. And it doesn't have to be straight on and off. It can be much more complicated where you have something where you're bringing it up a certain amount of percentage or not. And then that can also be uh, added to an external uh, foot pedal of sorts as well. So if you can see here, I've got my EV30, my Roland, um, attached to it so that if I want to actually manual, manually control something, I can still do that and not have to program it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you'd like to support what I do, uh, please consider joining my Patreon, and I appreciate it. Thank you.